It still hurts to sit. So I'm gonna stand. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll join you. Night vision is all the rage these days, and for good reason. Anyone who wants to see at night, navigate in the dark, or own the darkness is gonna need night vision to some degree. But along with the popularity and the growing demand, there's a lot of questions that are coming out of that as well. Both people who want to get into a set of nods or a single tube, as well as people who already own night vision, there's a lot of lingering questions. So what we're talking about are some of the myths, beliefs, and attitudes about night vision and really dissecting them to figure out what is fact and what is fiction. Because a lot of the information out there on the internet is conflicting. Uh, it, it doesn't all line up and oftentimes you have different reports coming from reputable sources, but almost never do they have documentation or visual documentation. And that is what we're gonna try to do today. So uh, we've invested a lot of money into uh, some of the highest quality night vision recording devices that we could get our hands on. So what we've got here, what we're filming this with is a Sony a7S III with a Kolari full spectrum IR conversion. This is one of the, the best night vision filming setups you can get. We also have a Kolari converted full spectrum IR GoPro, as well as a brown bear NVGR, which clips directly to the 14 to give you the exact image that you see, or at least as close as possible to what you see when you look through the tube. And we will be using that shot to compare um, clean tube versus potentially damaged tube. And as far as collecting all of that footage, you can, just like night vision, go and buy a camera or a set of cameras, but without a operator, haha, I can use that term if it's a camera operator, right? A camera operator is gonna be required. So Nicholas Jones, thanks for holding the camera for us, man. You're making all this content possible. Okay, but back to night vision. So something that's worth pointing out is, thank you very much Steel Industries for sending, the, sending us these tubes, but we still only have two different tubes to test. And so we're gonna get some cool results depending on uh, whether our hypotheses are correct or not. And so we could say that this is a test when in reality this is a sample size of one for everything that we do. So as we go through this, keep in mind that this is just the results that we found personally, and it's not ever going to be as, as awesome as you guys actually going out and testing some of this information for yourself. Well, like Josh said, Steel has supplied all of our tubes for today's test. Uh, we have uh, PVS-14 with an L3 tube, PVS-14 with an Elbit tube. Those are gonna be our two main demo units uh, that we can destroy if we want to, and you'll just have to wait and see if we do. It'll be worth your time. Uh, we also have uh, DTMVSs with L3 tubes, um, BNVDs with uh, Elbit tubes, and your personal 14 with Elbit. Elbit, and we'll be using those also to kind of record through for some of the other demonstrations because we're not just breaking tubes, and we're not just breaking down myths of what a tube can take. We're breaking down a lot of um, incorrect, maybe, beliefs on what you can do with night vision and the power that it does or does not give you. So, with that being said, let's hop into the myth busting. If my nods are turned off, they can't be damaged. Mm, that's a good one. This was one of the first myths that I was most curious about because I've heard from so many different people, some reputable, some just internet comments on Instagram and forums, uh, various reports going one way or the other. We've heard from uh, numerous reps of official companies saying, oh, if your nods are turned off and if they don't have a battery in them, nothing can hurt them whatsoever. And on the flip side, sometimes we've heard reps from sometimes the same company or different companies say, oh no, your tubes can absolutely be damaged even if they're turned off and with no power, so always wear, wear your day caps. This is one of the things that I wanted to figure out the most because uh, I have a bad habit sometimes of just, I keep my caps on usually, but I'll just set them in my front seat or I'll set them out on my desk in the middle of the day. And I don't really worry about it because I took you know some advice and was like, oh, okay, it should be fine. Well, was it fine? Is it fine? That's one of the first things we tested out. So for the test, we took one of these tubes and we shined a laser directly into it. Now, the reason for a laser is because it's not quite as high power as a direct sunlight ray for an extended period of time. And we shined it directly into the tube. No battery, 
not turned on obviously just to see is there going to be any damage now for this test we took a civilian class ve myers mall from like five feet away so pretty close fairly intense and uh well let's get into the results and the test itself taking the battery out this 14. Set it up here on this little stand. You're gonna have to tell me, Drew, where I have to set this thing because the mall is gonna go on this vise. Mm. By the way, you guys, uh, since we're here talking about setups uh, with uh, lasers and such, if you guys are looking for accessories to go along with your tools, we'll say that word for YouTube, you can hit up Shooting Surplus. They have all sorts of accessories that go along with tools like this, as well as night vision and helmets. Uh, they are a big sponsor of the channel. If you are curious, you can hop in the description of this video and find a link for a email chain. And that way you can save some money on uh, some discounted items. So Drew, let me kick this on. Yeah, dude, that's spot on. Oof, spot on? That is spot on. All right, let's we'll start the timer. And start. We're gonna leave it on here for a minute, uh, which I think is more than what most people are worried about. Like if you know, we go to some of these events and there's a lot of lasers and night vision floating around and everyone's freaking out about getting hit in the tubes with their, from the Op4 lasers. All right, so let's pop battery back in. This is the laser without battery test after. L3 tube. Yeah, I got a little. So I think all of us kind of had the general idea that, you know what, the battery is not installed and the tube is not turned on. It's probably gonna be okay. And we were correct. Yeah, the, the tube had maybe a few small little blems, if any at all, hardly recognizable and all things considered, no factor, no problem which uh, is a good, a good indication of the fact that if you do not have a battery in and it is not turned on, no cap, for real, for real, it's probably gonna be okay as long as it is in a fairly dark space, not exposed to the sun. Now, this leads us to our next question. What happens if we take the highest magnification of light on Earth, the sun, and we point it directly at the tube for about two hours with no battery? And this is a question a lot of us have asked. We know that if we were to leave this on with a battery installed for an extended period of time, looking at the sunlight, you're probably gonna have damage, no questions asked. But what if there's no intensification passing through the tube, there's no photons moving and activating and increasing the light, what actually happens to the tube itself? Now, I did not think that anything could possibly happen to one of these when there's no battery in it. Nothing. Me like, too. How could it? There's no intensification happening. That was my theory, and that theory has been substantiated by numerous reps from night vision companies. Not all of them. Some people say one thing, some people say the other. And I've seen uh, people uh, who come back from Milsom events that rented one of the, like a unit and damaged it and said, oh, I had it turned off the whole time. Here are the screenshots of what the tubes looked like. I didn't mess around with it. Like, it was off the whole time. And every time I saw a report like that, I was like, mm, those guys are lying. They actually probably left it on and messed up the tube. And they're trying to say that, you know, they had it turned off just to cover their, cover their own butts. And I get it, right? I never believed it. And then we tested it ourselves. So here's what we did. We took this PBS-14 white FOSS, ensured there was no battery installed, put it onto a helmet, and at about 420, haha, I know, we set it onto a fence post and pointed it directly at the sun. And for two hours, we let the sun set and streak across this 14. We really didn't think that anything was gonna happen. We were actually very confident that there was gonna be no blem, no error, no burn at all. And then two hours later, we came back, check out what we saw. Nipple down. Nipple down. I've been thinking about this all evening. Yep. 
I love it when airsofters post that they accidentally, or that they accidentally ruined a set of rental nods by having them off and pointed at the sun right. all day. Yep. So we'll see off how with true no, that is. Yeah, we'll see how true that is. It's like. And we definitely have sun damage. <laughs> With no battery. With no battery. Man, man, how bad is it? <laughs> well, if you turn it sideways, there's that mmm face. <laughs> All right, let me see. <laughs> oh my okay. gosh, dude. Oh, dude, you can absolutely see. You can track the sun. You can see where the sun went. Oh my goodness. Now, to be fair, this little one up here was there previously. So we should have gotten a, a good picture of it before, but all of this, all of this stuff is new. Oh my goodness. So we're going to black box this tonight. Yep. We'll, see what we can fix. Um, see what, see what like a 24 hour cycle. black box cycle will do. Yeah. Um, and then try and I bet it will help a lot. I bet you're right, but we shall see. Oh my goodness. Okay. Good luck. Come on over, Nick. Dude, no battery. Oh. <laughs> oh, All right. No. <laughs> All of us were under the impression it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Dude, two hours. Two right. hours in the sun. So, uh, mistake number one, we shouldn't have started out with this being our first test, but it's a good thing we have two units and we were able to continue running tests on this unit, but it was clear as day, no pun intended. With this particular unit, completely powered down, no battery, the sun will damage your nods. Now, will sunlight in general damage your nods? I don't know, but pointed directly at the sun, for this unit, absolutely, it did. And my other thought was, guys run around in the Middle East with these pointed to the sky for all day, weeks on end, months on end. How are there not tons of reports coming out about how, how much the sun damages these? And so maybe they're just not pointing directly at the sun, that's, sure. that's fair. And maybe the, the damage that indirect sunlight does to these uh, is not noticeable uh, the day of or the next day. Maybe it's only noticeable after years of use. But if this does streak across the sun for any period of time, I'm confident in saying that it will absolutely damage your tubes. So much that I now am a freak about covering up uh, my objective lenses in the day, no matter what. And some of you may be asking, well, why didn't you check it at 30 minutes or one hour or an hour and a half, somewhere between the two hours. For one, we wanted this test to be as if we had set the helmet down and let it rest for a period of time. And here's something else that we figured out. We have a very clean burn from one side to the next. And it's clear to us that the sun did burn the tube the first 30 minutes, the next 30 minutes, and then the following hour. So, will it burn it in 30 minutes? I'd be confident to say, yeah, it absolutely will. Now granted, this tube was not moving around on that fence post, it was staring directly into the sunlight. If you're walking around with this in the Middle East, in Tennessee, wherever it is that you are, and this tube is moving around for an extended period of time, not looking directly at the sunlight, you may have different results. But if this is set down on a table, staring directly into the sunlight, yeah, man, you may have some very serious issues. So, was the myth busted? Absolutely. What happens if we turn our tube on and point it at a medium power laser, as in the best civilians can get inside of the civilian class? So we took a B.E. Myers Mall, the same laser that we tested, with a tube turned off, but this time we turned that laser on and shined it directly into the tube. 
Now with that being said, in the middle of testing this, uh, a, a channel by the name of Falcon Claw came out with a video doing an extensive test on what white lights, lasers, and even sunlight will do to night vision units. Again, they had a small sample size just like us. It is a phenomenal video if you're wondering about the details of what can hurt a tube and what doesn't and how long it takes to damage a tube. I highly recommend you go and you watch that in its entirety, but it still was just a sample size of one, just like what we have. So we continued with our test to see what would happen when we shined a laser directly into it with the unit powered on. And these were the results. <laughs> All right, shine it in there. One. There's two, there's three, there's four. Okay. And stop. I don't see any major. Uh, I got one small little bloom down here in the corner, right here looks like a distortion similar to the earlier distortion that was already on this tube. So this is the old one. This is the new one. Now, after the, the test of the sunlight with the tube turned off, my assumption was, man, these things may be more fragile than I originally anticipated. And so my hypothesis that this tube is gonna be damaged was completely wrong. It seemed like if it wasn't auto-gating, it was at least protecting itself, which is, is pretty incredible. From five or six feet away, shine directly into that tube for a full minute. I'm confident to say you shouldn't be that concerned about IR light. If you're at a Milsim event like we've been to recently and someone is shining a laser directly at you, don't worry, keep fighting through it. Your tube is probably gonna be just fine. Now, what it does to the naked eye is their transmission from that laser through your tube to your naked eye, which we know IR lasers will burn your retinas. Uh, it's kind of a thing. That's something we can't test. At least I'm not willing to put my eyesight on the line. I'm already old, I've had LASIK. I don't wanna risk it. Uh, but if any of you want to, hit us up and we'll be happy to help out. Um, I was confident that the laser would damage the unit. What we saw was very minor, um, very minor burns that corrected themselves over time, nothing major. In fact, at one point we turned on the IR illuminator with the laser and the 14 auto-gated itself, basically turned itself off uh, to, to kind of alleviate some of the damage that could possibly be done to it. So that was very cool, but the laser itself no factor. No factor. So myth busted or not? I'd say it's busted. Watch enough TV shows or movies, everything from Patriot Games to Archer, you're gonna have the assumption just like I did that if you turn white light on inside of a house while you are looking through night vision, it's going to illuminate enough light and it is going to blind you. And then over a period of time, I did some research on my own and concluded, you know what? Gen 3 tubes, like everything that we tested here in this video, it's probably gonna auto-gate itself and be okay, and thus protect you as well. Even still, we were curious and we had to test it. Off. On. Nothing. So piggybacking off of that common belief that if you're outside using nods or you're inside of a building using nods and all the lights are off and someone flips on the light, yeah, well, with Gen 3 tubes, nothing really happens. Uh, they auto-gate themselves down. You can still see just fine. Um, and it wasn't a problem. Uh, granted, we didn't just leave our nods on the entire time. We soon you know, popped them up, which auto off them, or we flipped them off, uh, but it didn't blind us. Now, when it comes to weapon mounted lights or even handheld lights being shined at our tubes, it was a little bit of a different story. All right, so we got Drew at 10 yards. He's got his 14 on, turned on, looking right at us. We're gonna hit him with white light, starting with a 750 lumen stream light. Good. All right, stepping up to a thousand lumen. This is a Phoenix PD35, still kind of floody, not a very hot center. Good. Next, we're gonna to go to a cloud defensive MCH 
High Candela dual fuel, 18650. Good. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we have a Mod Light OKW, but it is on a rifle. Drew, you ready? Yep. Good. And finally, we have a Mod Light Hog. Last one, Drew. Yep. All right, did that turn off at all? Uh, did not turn off at all. I do have a couple of uh, little black spots. They look like healers though, so. Okay, well, let's give it a minute, make sure that heals up. All right, we're stepping up the distance. We're at about 50 yards now, continuing on with 750 lumens from the streamlight. Going on to the 1,000 lumens from the Phoenix. Again, MCH High Candela. Going to that OKW. Finally, the hog. We also want to test IR light, so we're going to throw an incredible amount of IR illumination at Drew. We're at about 10 yards at the most. We have a key G3. Let's see what this does. Drew, you ready? Yep. Oh, and yes, to be clear, the gun is clear and safe. All right, Drew. Yep, it auto-gated. Okay, interesting. So the results were kind of what we expected. Regardless of whether it was a low lumen or high lumen or low candela or high candela lights, these Gen 3 tubes auto-gated themselves basically off. It still allowed light to come through, so when we looked through the tube, we could still see a light source, but it was gated down so much so that it protected our eye more than our unprotected eye. So when Josh shined these lights in my eyes, the one with the tube over it, I still had natural night vision from. The one that didn't have a tube over it was completely blinded and I had to squint that eye. So this tube actually saved my eyesight while saving itself at the same time. And it's interesting how a car headlight can be a little bit different. Those car headlights are not as honed in like a Cloud MCH or a Modlite OKW, shining an incredible amount of candela directly into the tube itself. So we can get a little bit of a burn, but because that light was a little bit more floody, the tube itself can heal over time. Definitely got some uh, little, little uh, marks, but they will go away. Hey, Nick. Now, some of you may have heard this term before, but think about the lenses on your tube like a computer monitor. Yeah, you have a screen saver, and the purpose for that is for light to move around the screen itself, and over time, it's going to heal a blemish that happens on the monitor. So, if you have a blem inside of your tube that happens over a short period of time, don't stress it, leave the tube on, and it's probably gonna heal itself. And if it doesn't heal itself, you can always black box it, which we did to a couple of these units for some of the um, less intrusive light damage that was done to it. If there was like a slight blim that was created or a slight distortion, we black boxed it overnight and it cleared most of it up if it didn't already heal itself on its own. And this is especially important because when you're looking at uh, house lights from far away, and let's say you need to observe what's going on in a building or a structure or a street corner for hours and hours on end, but you're afraid to just stare at it with your tubes because it might damage them or leave a blim. Well, the Gen 3 tubes, we're very lucky in that they kind of heal themselves. And, uh, and so it's not absolutely necessary, at least not in the case of these two tubes, for us to look away uh, trying to protect the tube. So if they you are, can handle it. Right, so if you are looking for night vision, whether it's used or new, 
If you're getting a Gen 3, specifically white FOSS, I wouldn't be that concerned about having some light exposure. The byproduct of buying into this myth is people babying their nods. They treat them just like a lot of FUDs treat their guns, like safe queens. And there is absolutely a time and a place for that. You have to protect your assets, I get it. But as far as white lights or car headlights or house lights off in the distance are concerned, if you have modern Gen 3 2s, we're not talking about Gen 1 or Gen 2, which are a completely different story, but modern Gen 3 tubes, you don't have to worry about it so much. Now, with that being said, there's, other, there's one other type of light source that we wanted to test, and that is fire. And the intensity of a flame can vary wildly from a small fire to a massive blazing bonfire. Um, what that does to a tube can vary wildly. What we tested was a small flame that we stared at for over 10 minutes. All right, so we black boxed this unit for um, close to about 16, 18 hours. As you can see, there is no healing whatsoever. So we're gonna continue to test this unit with the fire. How are we looking? Definitely got a little bit of a burn here. Yeah? Not much though. It's uh, slightly blacked out. All right, here's some more. Got some haziness right here, but honestly nothing major. I was expecting a whole lot more. Again, that's a small fire with only a small amount of flame intensity. What a larger fire will do, well, you can always test on your own. And this was a bit of a surprise to me after the sun damage that happened on a tube with no battery. My assumption was, man, sitting five or seven yards away from a fire, regardless of the size, we know how much heat, there's UV coming off of that. Um, there's a lot of energy and light being put out by that fire. For 10 minutes, there's gotta be some damage, right? Well, man, I was proven wrong. Fire, to some degree, may damage your tubes, but after Drew sat and stared at that fire for a fairly serious amount of time, uh, no damage or little to none was pretty impressive. So, is this myth busted? Uh, to me, yes. If, if lights get turned on, I'm not gonna be blind. Oh. So to wrap up the concern about light, whether it's IR, sun, or fire here on earth, can it damage our tubes? The answer to that question is, it depends. Over the past few years, the hot button topic when it comes to night vision is the height of your optic mount. Everyone wants a tall mount to be able to see their dot clearly through their nods, through their PVS-14, through their dual tubes, and you know, for the real rich boys, uh, for, uh, through their panos. But do you actually need a tall op optic mount to aim passively? And when we say aim passively, we're saying you're actually bringing the gun up to look at the dot while it's shouldered not using your laser or illuminate or anything like that. You're just using, you're shooting it like you would normally shoot a rifle. Yeah, and the theory that we, at least I had was correct. I can absolutely shoulder a co-witness or standard height mount, just like this loopholed LCO with a PBS-14 over my right eye. Now, there's a lot of other trade-offs. Do you have your left tube on dual tubes bumping into the charging handle or the stock or whatever else. No, no, I don't. And here's the reason as to why. We can place a part of our shoulder onto the stock here at different locations. We have the ability to bring the gun higher up to our eyes or lower down as is necessary. Now, you may have better or, or worse recoil control, but to answer the question, can it be done? Yeah. Absolutely. We can play with 
co-witness, lower third, 193, so on and so forth as we go up in optic height and, and still make work happen. The important thing here is train to what you have and try out, if you can, as many different options as possible to see what feels most natural and, and comfortable to you. Um, it's really easy to look at something with a co-witness or an absolute and be like, oh, that, that'll be uncomfortable for night vision. Well, it maybe, maybe for you, maybe not. It didn't bother us at all. And I too, as soon as I got night vision, I was like, oh, gotta get my 193 mounts or my Unity Fast. Uh, even looked at the Hydra. I was like, as soon as, as soon as I got it, I've got to get this tall mount. I didn't have to. I, I absolutely did not have to. Now, do I prefer a taller mount? Yeah, sure. It definitely makes shooting under night vision a little bit easier for me. But the point here is to train with what you have. And if you do that to a high enough standard, it doesn't matter what height your optic mount is. Now, I know it's really easy to rag on one or the other, the short mounts or the tall mounts. The fact of the matter is, all these mounts hold an optic. That's it. The real variable here is you. Can you train to a high enough standard so that no matter which mount you're, you're using, you can shoot well with it? I'm not gonna brag on myself, but I'll certainly brag on Josh. In the middle of the night, we just tossed him guns, and no matter which one it was, you can see his ready up time. It was pretty much on par regardless of what optic he was using, whether he was using absolute co-witness, lower third, 193, overbore and unity height or unity fast uh, height, or even his top mounted uh, Delta Point Pro. So it didn't matter. Point here is train, try out a ton of different optics, find what works best for you. We have to thank Wideners for sponsoring the ammo for this video specifically. They did send us some 62 grain PMC for us to shoot and actually test out the optic height, not just dry firing, but also pulling triggers and testing how accurate is it, what's the recoil control like, and how functional is different height optics under night vision. So if you guys are looking for some ammo, hit the description in the video. Big thank you to them. They make content like this possible. Now a lot of people may think, I need a ton of ammo and I have to go shoot at night in order to get good at it. No man, you can dry fire. Turn the lights off in your garage, in your family room, in your bedroom, whatever the case is for you, and get reps. Practice. Find your, your dot under night vision over and over and over for hours and you can make it happen. So, I need a tall optic mount to shoot passively with my night vision. Myth busted or not? Busted. You can absolutely make it happen. When you don't own night vision and someone else does, they look like a god in the dark. The assumption is that they can see everything. And then one day you buy your own set of nods or a simple PVS-14 and you fall further into the trap of assuming, man, I can see everything that I need in the dark. The reality is nods don't give you very much contrast. So the theory, I can see everything that I need to under night vision or nods are better than white light. It's false. And here's a perfect example. So one example is that when we were out doing some milsim, we realized that we could find a group of dudes, but we couldn't actually tell what color are they? What team are they on? Now, if we spend time around our own individuals, we can make out features like, I know Drew has a beard and his shoulders are shaped a certain way and he's a certain height and the kit and where we have flags or patches, some of that stands out. But even when you get at distance, like 75 yards where Drew is right now, it's darn near impossible to really start to make out some of those features. Now on top of that, he is wearing a tan shirt, but I can't tell that in any way. I can tell that it is, as far as I can tell, a solid shirt. Uh, there may be some markings or outlines on the outside, but I can't tell in your night vision. Now, if I turn on a white light, now I can see, okay, that's a tan shirt, that's a green hat, he does have a beard, he has his hands in his pockets. But again, under nods, it's not giving me the information needed, especially at this distance. So myth, I can see everything that I need to under night vision. No, not at all. There's a lot more crucial information that can be needed and we need to actually know when to apply tools like white light. So let's have Drew change. He's got a couple different uh, camo patterns and colorways and see if I can tell under nods what stands out and what doesn't before I turn on white light. Golly, that's rough. So again, I can tell that the sleeves are a little bit different, of a different color. I assume that uh, 
is wearing tan just based on the color that I'm seeing through the 14. Hit him with a vampire. It's not really giving me any info. Again, I can see a little bit of a shadow there, but it's, it's not providing me any color because that's not how night vision works. So once again, let's go white light and see what it produces. Definitely tans, and now I can make out what I know to be a, uh, a multi-cam pattern. So it's tan multi-cam, there's the air in. Just throwing another colorway on, and it is significantly darker. Let's hit him with that vampire. Okay, there are darker tones in there, and a colorway that tends to have darker tones could be M81, uh, but I can't actually tell. It could just be, a, a, I don't know. It could be Multicam Tropic for all I know. Let's go white light, and that is M81. Now, in, in certain environments, when you don't need to PID or positively identify someone as a good guy or a bad guy or an innocent or a threat, in certain environments where that doesn't matter, well, okay, I guess you could get away with only using nods and not needing to white light uh, the person you're trying to look at. But here in the States, as civilians or as law enforcement, if you're looking under nods at someone, there's a lot, you there's a lot of information you still can't discern just from looking at them under night vision or even just looking at them under thermal. You have to use white light to actually see who they are, what they look like, what they're wearing to really determine, is this the person I'm looking for? Is this person a threat or not? So as far as white light and, and night vision is, is concerned about which one is more important, it's not a question of either or. It's a matter of both and. You need to master the use of white light on as a handheld or on your weapon system, and you also need to master nods. One without the other, you're missing out. Now, if you're on the receiving end of some white light and you have nods, the one thing you need to make sure that you have is some awesome apparel on. And if you're looking for some of that, you can get it at Americana Pipe Dream. Those chads over there, they're our bros. We love those guys. They're also hilarious on Instagram. They make some of, or they, they supply some of the best surplus camouflage in the game. They're also a huge supporter of ours, have been since the get-go. We really appreciate them. Hit them up, show them some love, description in the bio, save some money. Let's get back into it. It's really easy once you snap down your nods to get sucked in to the tubes right in front of your eyes and to forget completely about the lighting of the area that you're in. Now it's a little bit easier if you're using a PVS-14 because your uncovered eye is constantly aware of what the light situation is around you. But if you're wearing dual tubes, it's really important to regularly be checking under your tubes or out the peripheral of the side of your eyes to see what kind of light you're in because you may not actually need night vision. There's been plenty of situations that Josh and I have been in, whether it was hiking around or doing some CQB, where we're looking under our nods the whole time, and once the drill is done, or once we've come to a stopping point, and we flip those suckers up, we realize, oh, we can kind of see just fine with our natural night vision. The point here is, is that if you don't have to look under your nods, then don't sacrifice all this peripheral vision that you get by not looking under them. If you don't have to fight in a 30 degree field of view, or if you don't have to navigate is a better word, uh, in 30 degrees, then don't. Don't feel like you, as soon as those things come on, that that's the only thing that you can look through. Remember, you have to read your lighting conditions. Don't use the nods if you don't have to. So one of the tricks that you can use here is if you are running dual tubes of any kind, uh, setting them at a height that they are not completely owning your entire vision. Step number one, pull them away from your eyes. This gives you the ability to lift your eyes and they're not completely owning your entire vision. Step number two, set them higher than you think you might actually need. So we're actually gonna look through the lower one third of the tubes themselves so that they're not completely taking up our vision and we have to do less of a tilt in order to look under our tubes. Let's say that the lighting conditions change while we're moving or a car rolls down the road or someone else turns white light on I don't want to have to go to work. I lift my head completely up in order to actually see what's going on in the light. So having our gear set up in a way that we can actually lift our eyes or turn our eyes to run our optic 
see white light or read lighting conditions is gonna get us ahead of the game simply by programming our gear one step ahead. And also by running them slightly above, by looking through the lower third or even the lower half like Josh was talking about, you can still get a full FOV of, of the tube by simply turning your head down and your eyes then angle through it like this. So you, you have the benefit of both when you run them slightly higher up. And this is not something that we figured out on our own. This is something we figured out from a friend who kind of showed us how he did it, uh, uh, who uses these for uh, serious things, much more serious than our LARPing. So uh, yeah, try it out. It'll take a little bit to get used to because you're used to like looking directly through the tube the whole time. But with enough training, a couple nights out with your nods, it'll become second nature. So night vision is better than white light. Myth, is it busted or not? I'd say it's busted. Both are advantageous. You need to have the ability to use both in conjunction with each other. If I have nods, I'm invisible. It's super easy to turn on your nods and think that you're a ninja. That's just not the case. I have been guilty of this and I've seen so many other people fall into this trap where once you get stuck behind your tubes, you completely forget about all the light around you, behind you, in front of you, to your side. You think that you are in this bubble of darkness that just follows you around like you're in a video game and you're hiding in the shadows constantly like on Metal Gear Solid. It's just not the case. It's super easy uh, when you're looking under nods to forget that, oh, I'm standing under a street light or, oh, I'm standing in the splash of, a, of an outside uh, exterior light or there is a light behind me that is giving away my silhouette. And to other people who may be watching you that don't have night vision, whose eyes are adjusted to the night, they can see you just fine. On top of that, there's a ton of things that we can do outside of the night vision itself and white light on the exterior that can give us away. So for example, gear that's reflective. In the military, we've heard it in all the movies, noise and light discipline, that's a huge factor. 100 concepts, whether it's a kill flash or a white light cover, that's a big component to actually hiding our identity in the darkness. Next, if you don't have a good flash hider, or even better, a suppressor at night, those can be seen very well when it's completely dark. If you rip off two or three rounds in the darkness and you do not have a good kill flash on your muzzle of some kind, it's gonna give you away very easily. Next, you also have to be aware of the fact that there are security cameras. And if you do activate an IR laser or illuminator, if someone has an old school camera, night vision, or once again, security cameras, it's gonna pick up on that. So there's a lot of things that we can be doing on accident or even intentionally that could be giving us away. Finally, even some of the gear that we don't think about like radios giving away our position as they light up when you or someone else pushes their PTT or even our watches that reflect light or maybe even collect light and illuminate in order to tell us the time. There's a lot of things out there that can actually emit light when we don't expect it. So. Drew, what do you think? Myth busted or not? Are we invisible when we put on our nods? Busted. We're not. Just because you put on your night vision doesn't mean you're invisible. You still have to be able to read lighting conditions around you and be stealthy when you're LARPing, of course. Speaking of night vision, come here, Tom. Let me see. Oh yeah, I can see you just fine, Nick. <laughs> Everyone says nods are fragile. Oh my gosh. Now, we had our own theories and there were a lot of speculations based on the internet, our own experiences, and what good friends have told us over the years. And originally the theory was that, yeah, man, you gotta be very careful with everything night vision related. They can all break. If you drop them, they're gonna die. If you put the battery in wrong, they're gonna die. If you put them at the sun, they're gonna die. We had to be ultra careful. And then over a period of time, we all became very comfortable with the idea that, oh man, it seems like these can take a lot more damage than we originally anticipated. 
So the PVS-14 is widely regarded as one of the most rugged and robust piece of, pieces of night vision equipment out there. Um, it's certainly more durable uh, than dual tubes, which have a lot more moving parts or polymer. You know, you drive over this with a car, or if you drop this a couple times or from a, from a, you know, a tall height onto something extremely hard, dual tubes are more likely to break at one of these hinge points. That's just kind of a fact. Everyone knows that. That's not a myth. Uh, but how durable is the PVS-14? Well, the military has their own rating, their own drop test or durability rating for items like this. And a lot of those tests vary everything between uh, PCs that you may be dropping while you're carrying them um, on a aircraft carrier. Uh, night vision that could be dropped out of a helicopter while you're doing a halo jump. There's crazy tests that are done, but for civilians, that's our biggest concern. And a lot of us are not jumping out of airplanes with night vision. Some of us may be around water to some degree, but we know that these do have IP ratings that we don't necessarily have to be concerned about. Now, the biggest test that did arise for our concern was, man, what if, just like in the intro, this drops off of our helmet at roughly six feet. Now, that range may vary between seven feet, depending on how tall you actually are with a G24 with a J arm mounted onto a helmet if you're wearing boots. But we drop these at about six and a half feet onto a six inch slab of concrete multiple times. And uh, the tests and the results might surprise you. To my teacher in fourth grade who said my science fair experiment wouldn't amount to anything and neither would I, this is for you, okay? Look at me now. And while we're at it, uh, to my third grade teacher who said that I was her glowing star, her best student, showed the most aptitude for uh, PowerPoint, <laughs> economics, uh, physical aptitude, and kinesthetic motion. Right. Thanks, Mom. I was homeschooled. I love you, too. This All teacher right. also helped him take baths as a child. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so... We're, we're basing this off of not quite seven feet, not quite six feet. Um, I think everyone, minus the cameraman in the room, is below average height for the average male in America. Thanks. But we're, <laughs> hey, I said you and I. We're basing this off of six and a half-ish is where we're going to drop this. Because if I stand here and my tube is mounted all the way up, yep, if I have boots on, I could be reaching six and a half feet for my PVS-14 from an average drop height. So we have a six inch slab that we're gonna drop this 14 on. Uh, I'll throw this camera on so we'll actually be able to see where it impacts on the tube. Drew, let me get this rolling and then you wanna do the honors? I think you should do the first one because I'm gonna have trouble reaching seven feet. Oh my gosh. So, Let's make by it the way, it's not below average. It's, it's average. Okay. Five foot seven and a half. Three, two, one. Okay, that sounded bad. Was the tube on originally? Nope. Nothing. As in no damage? No damage. All right, let's roll it with the tube Drop on. it on the objective lens. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, something broke. Plastic came off. <sighs> that felt like the objective lens where you adjust your uh, focus. Yeah, let's take a look. Definitely landed on, on objective. Where did this go? Oh, this came off uh, right here, which I don't even know what that is. Well, it holds your battery, so that's the framing for your battery. I see no damage. Man. Let's go ahead and just prove it here. So this is another camera device we've been using. It's a GoPro with a NVG mount. NVG mount. No damage. Man, oh man. I'll make sure this will still turn. Yep. I am having trouble focusing. Yep, this is not turning anymore. Okay. Here, you give it a, uh, you give it a pull. Oh, there we go. Just had to break okay. at least a little bit. A little bit. Three, two, one. Oh man. 
It's sounding brutal. That sounded like aluminum head. We definitely have some bending now. Okay. Notice this is bent in. Are you able to see that, Nick? And this is a six inch concrete slab. No visual damage. Can you adjust that? Uh... Kind of, not really. Yeah, you're right. It's moving. But not. But not. Yeah. yeah. It moves about an eighth of an inch in rotation. Three, two, one. I know. No visual damage there. Yeah. So the ocular ring is definitely not focusing as it should. And you can kind of see here, I don't know if you can see like the gaps here. So it's tight over here and there's a slight gap on this side. This took a beating and didn't bend. Three, two, one. Ooh, some metal came off there. Oh no, this is the lens that goes over your IR flood. Again, if you were to drop this out in the field and this were to come out, you're done. You're never finding it. Still no visible deterioration that I can tell. Actually, we might be getting a couple more peppers. Mm. I think we're getting some more peppers. I think we're getting some extra debris. I'll take a look. Let's see. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's in it's like inconsistent specs. spots, but yeah, there's a lot more peppering, kind of like what you might see from the factory. Some some little airs, but they're all over. Short guy problems. Three, two, one. Ooh, that was good. More dense. But can you move it to break it back free? Yes, which this is supposed to be what turns. Earlier, this ring is what was turning, and this one wasn't. This ring now turns. You shouldn't have any grinding in there, but it's at least moving on you. Oh yeah, dude, it's, it's working. It's just, it sounds like there's, you know, an ocean worth of sand in there. Um, yeah, it works. It is incredibly beaten up, but all parts at the moment are functioning. I'm sure there's some gears in here that are supposed to be catching and actually turning and taking pieces of glass in and out, um, kind of like on an LPVO. Um, and there's something broken in there, but it, at the moment, let's check this illuminator. You can't even really tell with all these flood lights. Yeah. The light is coming on. It appears that everything is functioning as designed. Um, but man, parts are starting to fall off. Drop it again. Let's see what happens. Definitely getting some scarring. So it's definitely bending in some here. Right. Gain adjustment's fine. It's still auto gating. Those lights, the on and off switch is not working so hot. Just hard to turn. Mm-hmm. You can turn it on, but it doesn't snap on anymore. So that is definitely bent. It's, it's off. I can turn this to illuminator and the red light comes on. So it's still powered. Hmm. Yep. See how this is starting to come apart right here. Yep. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can hear it. It's coming completely out. Yep. So I'm looking at, you can actually see the circuitry at this point. So what's holding that battery component in? Is it screws? This, these over here. Okay. No. It's done too. D E D. Do you want to go ahead and open this up and see what it looks like? Oh, or let's not? do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so these aren't just the screws that stripped. These are the posts that the screws screw into that ripped out of this. So let's take it entirely apart. This one's definitely bent. Hmm. The screw is bent, you can tell. 
Oh, jeez. Alright, so... I don't know much about night vision, but I'm pretty sure these need to be touching this metal. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, hold on. This should go right back in there. Actually, no, this needs to be soldered on. If it wasn't broken before, <laughs> um, okay. Hey, do I you got? Do you, have, do you have any? Hey, do you have tape? That'll work. Give me a piece of tape. Here, watch this, dude. Watch, watch this. I have my doctorate. In what? Doctor Who. <laughs> hey, this happens on every good episode of MythBusters. Those two guys end up jank rigging something yeah. to continue to work. In this case, of course I'm no I'm me. starting to question like everything that you own, like your car, your guns. Tie down straps on fuel tank. Seriously. Does this thing come together with some like glue or something? Yeah, probably. This tape isn't sticky enough. Oh no. Hey, will one work? Probably not. This is gonna work, watch. I guarantee you this is gonna work. And you guys are gonna be like, oh my gosh, Drew, you're so brilliant. You're so handsome. Can't believe you got shunned at the seventh grade science fair. Oh, I'm still here. In VG surgery. You still need two screws. I'm holding it together with my hands. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it works, baby. Yeah, as long as you hold it together with your hands. Hey, you know what? Here, okay, we'll re-screw it, it back in. It takes both hands to run your night vision. Okay, let's try it. Yep. Yeah. This is gonna work. So, the answer to the question, myth, night vision is fragile. Well, I would, do you have tape on hand? I would say a PVS-14 oh, certainly. is actually quite durable. We dropped it numerous times. Yeah. I mean, if you're an idiot, nothing will survive you. Let's be sure. real. Your car, your home appliances, your body, um, nothing will. So neither will night vision. But if you take a tumble, you're probably okay. If you keep falling, you should probably learn to walk. Get after it. Seems that thing down. Fold this in. Alright, nice and tight. Get it. How many civilians does it take to tape on, tape together night <laughs> Alright. Alright, we're still going. Let's kill these lights and find out. My objective lens does not hardly turn at all. There we go, we're back in business with it. Just to confirm for all the skeptics. We do still have power. And yeah. Gain adjustment is still fine. Still auto gating. <laughs> All right. Think it's gonna survive, Josh? No. The tape on the inside doesn't stand a chance. Here we go. Oh. 
Still on? Drew. Is it still on? Works. Ha! I told you, dude. Okay, well, yes, you can see at night, but so can my cat. <laughs> so can I with a bag of carrots, but I mean, <laughs> the point you're trying to make there. Ooh. Still on, but we have a crack. We have a crack internally. Something has come loose, or that, else that's the piece of duct tape. Hit that camera. We can still see. There's definitely something that has cracked or come loose. Oof. Zero discernible changes. Nothing. Still going strong. We now have two massive pieces. Just to reiterate how hard that 14 is hitting, there's multiple marks. And sure, it's plastic probably marring up the concrete, but it's hitting hard enough to at least leave a mark here. I recorded that through this PVS 14, which still works after I taped it back together. Okay, I remember this. Still nothing. We've got two pieces in there now, but that's it. I feel like we need to turn this off, go drive over it with a car, and then come back and see if it turns on in the dark. Okay. So it does still work. Auto gain does still work correctly. Manual gain works correctly. We're definitely hitting some focus issues here, mainly because this uh, ocular lens is so jacked up. You can only do so much with it. This is using the objective to its you know, tightest position. But yeah, still works. I am squeezing this pretty tightly together. Uh, when I first turned it on, it didn't come on. Then I crunched down on it and it popped on. So I'm actually really surprised this thing is still going. Should we do anything else to it? I think we've hit a point where we know um, it is significantly more durable than I anticipated. Pretty dope. Still works. It still works. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, the uh, the durability of the night vision tube was one thing. I didn't expect it to last that long. Um, the ability to adjust our focus lenses came in and out at times. Um, and that's one thing, these are very durable. That being said, the tape, <laughs> that was shocking. Tape can fix just about anything, even, uh, you know, $4,500 PVS-14 with white foss, uh, high spec Elbit tubes. So uh, remember though, before you go out and you start dropping your nods, this is just a sample size of one, okay? I have seen plenty of people on the internet talking about dropping their 14 or their dual tubes and with one hit, everything's done, okay? This was just a very controlled sampling where we dropped it on the objective lens numerous times, the ocular lens several times, the battery compartment a lot, and even drove over it, which I don't know exactly which contact point was made when your tire went over it, but I'm gonna say all of it. Um, and this held up really well. Is there damage? Absolutely. Is this broken? Oh, for sure. Can you still see through it if you had to? Yes. So, nods are fragile. Is that myth busted or? It depends. As we know, like Drew already stated, if you have articulating tubes, something other than RNVGs, or even RNVGs where you have more leverage where something can break, yeah, to a degree they are fragile. Are they as fragile as the camera that is recording us right now? No, they're still fairly durable and they do have military testing to a degree where a lot of people are running around in the woods, bumping into car doors, bumping into door frames, and they're still surviving just fine. We could spend the next five years of our life busting myths about night vision. And in all honesty, that sounds like a lot of fun. But we had to close this somewhere, so we chose to pick the ones that we personally 
um, ran into the most in our journey into being Nod's wearers. Oh, what's up, Tom? Speaking of night vision, hey, buddy. So the important thing to remember here is that just because you saw us talk about something or just because you saw us toss around a PVS 14, this is not gospel. This is just our experience. And you should take this with the same grain of salt that you take all the internet rumors, all of the comments, all of the bickering back and forth uh, on Instagram. Be wise and discerning when reading that stuff. Um, don't just believe something because someone says it. Don't just believe something because someone shows it to you one time. There is no substitute for testing this stuff out uh, as much as you can on your own. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and drop your PVS-14, but one of the common things that we see people do over and over and over again when they get into night vision is they treat it like a baby. Just like they got a new LMT or they got a new Nights, they stuff it in the safe and never sees the light of day. No, you own this gear for the purpose of being proficient with it. Don't be afraid of it, use it. If you break it, you break it. Most places, especially steel industries, they have great warranties, especially if you're honest about how it happened. So. There's no substitute for using this stuff and discovering this stuff on your own. Don't take our word for it. Get out there and do it yourself. All right guys, finally, if you guys want to see the most amazing sky that God has created, put nods on. It, even if you're in the city and you look up at the night sky, you can still see the Milky Way. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you turn nods on, it's incredible and it makes you want to worship. Now. If you want to extend that superpower, that ability, that uh, capability of being dangerous, navigating at night, communicating with, you, with each other, seeing uh, each other's lasers, and walking through the darkness, share the joy of night vision with each other. Finally, if you guys have any questions, Patreon has the closest uh, capability of sending a message to us, we monitor that daily and we do our best to get back to you guys as best as possible. So if you guys are curious about who has uh, the closest capabilities of communication, Patreon for sure. The heck, Tom? He was done being touched. I think we leave that in there. <laughs> okay, Tom is, is tired of filming. We're gonna wrap it there. Just remember, train and Proliferate nods. You know what it does? What does it do? It comes down. And then what? Yeah. Adam, yeah. you see me? I don't have them turned on right now, but you can bring them down. Yep. Can you see me now? I can still see you. Okay, can I do it too? Put them back up. Put these caps back up. Dada. Now, now, what is this called? A night vision. Yeah. Can I do it too, Dada? Yeah, you want to do Can it? Can you get me? Well, I got to leave it on my head. I'm not going to take it off. You're okay. There we go. I want to do You want to do it? Kissy. All right, let's let me try. Kissy, Kissy, Kissy.